it's right there. Right by the road. This is Captain Cook Drive, which is a heritage listed area. Look at that, that is classic Queensland. Wow. Look at that, palm trees on the beach. Yep. Get used to that. Wow. That's a good taste of what's ahead of us. Look at that. The water. Golly gosh, look at that view. There weren't sharks and crocs down there. Be the ideal swimming spot. How pretty does this look? It's so picturesque up here. We're just sort of west of Port Douglas and it's only our van that's going to get to enjoy these views for a couple of weeks. We're leaving our van up here while we head up to the Cape, up to Cape York, and then we'll come back for it at the other end. We've just pulled up at a watermelon stall on the side of the road and they've got all sorts of watermelons here. We've got yellow watermelons, we've got red seedless or seeded over the back there. Five dollars each, or three for ten dollars. How's this bad boy? Check out the size of this melon. <laughs> this is the one we got. It's bigger than my head. <laughs> it is. I love it up. We've just ducked into the Laura Roadhouse and paid for our campsite for the night. So we're just going to go across the road to the community campground, which is twenty dollars a night per car, twenty-two dollars with power. Best bargain in Australia, I reckon. We've driven about two and a half hours to get here. Um, coming up from Port Douglas and we're using this as our first stop heading up towards the Cape. We're traveling uh, Lund's Lap with us as well, we're doing Cape York together. There's the van and Jez just starting to pack down. We've brought our coach bolts with us and our drill so rather than banging in the pegs we've got these long long screws which are 20 centimeter, 25 centimeter coach bolts. I've gutted and filleted my papaya. I'm ready to start the day. Are you proud of me? It's not my coffee. Hmm. <laughs> Give me my coffee back. It's yours. <laughs> We're just heading up into the Split Rock uh, Aboriginal Art Area, which is just outside Laura. As you come into Laura, it's just on the left. We camped overnight in Laura, but we're going to go and check this out before moving on towards Cohen. All right, so we're going to go from the car park here through the shelter up to the different rock sites. So this is the Split Rock Aboriginal Art Site. It's quite a steep rock climb here, heading straight up, working our way up to the art. I'm going to walk for a while, so we're a bit out of shape, I reckon. This is Split Rock. We made it. It's pretty neat, isn't it? Yeah. Looks like recent, does it? Yeah. It's still really earlier. Still the rock. I think there's more around the corner. Let's go have a look. With what we learned at Uluru and Kakadu, this must have been the classroom, either for the young men or, or boys. Does it say what it's about? So we've got some human figures up here. We've got an evil quirkin, which is like an evil spirit. Looks like a flying uh, squirrel there. And we've got some people gathering, hunting. Around an echidna over here. Yeah, there's At Kakadu, we learnt that the rock art was actually a way of teaching younger generations about lots of things. So it might be about traditions and belief and culture, or it might be about hunting practices, or how to live or do a particular skill in life. So these rock arts behind us, and they were used, I guess like a whiteboard or a blackboard would be used these days in a classroom. That was well worth doing. It's uh, 300 metres off the main road to, to get here. Uh, sorry, it's just off the main road, nine minutes out of Laura, and then it's a 300 metre walk. So it's well worth doing to come up and have a look at some of the local Aboriginal art. There's not a lot of interpretation. There's a few signs on what it is. Um, some of it seems to be more recent. There is local Aboriginals. Now, they charge you $10 per person to come up here. Now, that's quite a lot. So for us as a family, that's $50. And I'm not going to pay it. And I want to explain why. We, we've been to Tiwi Islands. We've been to Uluru, Kakadu. We've been to a lot of Aboriginal art sites. And we've met a lot of Aboriginal elders and been very respectful. And we've brought our children here to learn about Aboriginal culture. But last night in the Laura campground, it was Thursday, which is payday to local people, and I've never heard so much foul language, screaming, yelling, fighting, the police came. So as a result, we're not going to pay the $50, which is disappointing I'm not, 
but I'm still really angry about everything my kids heard last night on a Thursday. So if you do come here and, and you want to look at the Laura campground to stay, Thursdays and Fridays, um, we've been told by the local guys here who've been here 20 odd years, that they're the worst two nights to come. So try to time yourself around that. Everyone's much more placid and they haven't just got paid and they haven't spent it on money and they're not fighting. So pretty disappointing, but I'm sure it'll get better as we go out and meet some of the other cultures up further, which a lot of them are dry communities and um, probably for good reason, unfortunately. This trip's all about showing these boys Australia, teaching them about our history, sharing with them other cultures who were here on this land before us and it's a great thing to be able to give our kids an experience but sometimes you get disappointed i'm just going to chalk this one down to that and we move on we're looking forward to getting to Cohen. great views out over the valley here and that's the pdr below the road we're going to continue on today here we go this is the end of it well it's the start of road works we'll see um, how smooth it is it might be a right start they're continually working on the PDR, so their ultimate goal is to seal it all the way up to Weeper, but it's not there yet. Let's see what this is on. It's always a bit of a bump at the end you need to watch for, particularly if you're towing. So far so good, it's quite firm, they're doing a lot of work, so been graded recently. It's quite firm. There's a few loose rocks, but nothing much. There's no rocks and shale like we've experienced on. Not really any corrugations yet. No, I on the plenty of any loose, so pretty good. Ultimately, this is going to turn into bitumen corrugations, bitumen corrugations, as they seal the worst parts and leave the best parts, and then eventually patch them together. But we might get a bit of luck today, all the way up to Cohen. It might, it might be pretty reasonable. There's no traffic. We haven't passed anyone. No one coming up behind us. We've seen while we're at the campground, we had a couple of cars coming either way, but not much. There's a bunch of eagles up ahead. Have a look at this. Found themselves in bed. What are we going down, down to? We're going to go down the 25s all around, and that's going to give us a really comfortable ride. I just need to be careful on corners so I don't roll the tyre off the rim, but 25 should be a very comfortable ride. So you don't get a true reading until you turn it off. So just we're going to go all the way down to 25. These trees, you can see the red dirt from the road on them, but it's interesting up close, if you have a look, the red dirt's on this side here, and that's the direction that we're driving in, so the direction everyone's going, and around the other side, I don't know if you can see on the video, but they're actually not as red, it's actually just the tree colour, so you can see that the uh, red dust has only really covered the side, of the direction that the traffic's going, so on the other side of the road, it would be the opposite side. We're winding our way around on the way up to Cohen from Laura. The road's a lot hillier and windier than I'd expected. I guess I expected just a mostly straight road. So it's a fairly interesting drive. How's it going for the driver? This is one of the easiest roads we've been on. Honestly, take your van, no problems. We've done, you know, for context, we've done the Marini Loop. We've done uh, into Winjana Gorge. Down the, down the Gibb River Road and Tunnel down Creek, plenty. plenty Highway, even into Alquestro, the driveway, which was um, absolutely horrible. Um, this is a really easy road to drive. It's in great condition. In, in context, this is up to Cohen, which is our next stop. But yeah, really, really straightforward road. No problems at all. We made it. We made it to Cohen. That was very, very easy driving. It's a big cafe there too. Yeah, it's a decent sized town. We're going to head over to this historical centre 
Harry said, is it kind of like a cultural center or an information center? And I said, a little bit, but with more about the history. So we're gonna go into there. It's free to have a look around and then uh, have some lunch and then find our campground. Wow. How cool is this? Just let yourself in. Nice. Actually, the ceramic insulators that are used on the old telegraph lines, and they're lined up here inside. You can see the different shapes, different sizes. So when the army was building the telegraph line, they had to use these to ensure that the communication lines were insulated. This is one of the houses that was built years ago to house communications. These telegraph houses held. This is a repeater station. So these were spread out. Someone would operate and send the signals from the tip. This is actually one of the old telegraph stations and this has been moved to here in Cohen from Maine and in 1942 the US and Australian Army actually cut the the telly the old telly track and ran telegraph lines to the tip of Australia for communication efforts and this is one of the many stations that would have been along that track. We have snagged an absolute ripper of a campsite here so we are right alongside the Cohen River and just out of Cohen, just north of Cohen, towards Cape York, Dead Set Ripper. For our meals, we've got two weeks away. We have all of our food on board. We've got a menu here. So this is, I guess, a bit of the scoutness coming out. You can see here, we've got each day, we've got each meal planned out. We've got a freezer and, sorry, a freezer and a fridge. And then this is all full of food down here. And we've got a few things um, just floating in different places while we uh, see a bit of a pantry up here whilst we eat it down. Just cooking up some dinner. We've kept it really, really simple this time around. So we've got some sausages and I've got some halloumi and mushroom in here together with an Asian salad for dinner tonight. This is our morning view this morning. We slept with the tent open. Sun came up over there. Great way to start the day. We're off to Bremwell Station today, so we're gonna pack up camp, keep moving. So I'm just cooking some breakfast. The kids are off playing. I've got my baked beans on the burner. I've just cooked it up on there. Now it's too hot to touch. Enter Mr. Stubby Holder. Thank you, Mr. Stubby Holder. Just gonna place my baked beans in my stubby holder. All right, there we go. Cheers. Genius, honey. I am right up there when it comes to smartness. <laughs> smartness. Is... <laughs> you enjoy that. See you later. Hang on. Another day of driving down and we've made it to Bramwell Tourist Park. It's again been pretty good driving. We it's just towards the last bit, the last 50 k's have been a little bit uh, corrugated, but not, not too bad. It's probably similar to the Plenty Highway on the other side, but not as much uh, rock as it was on the Queensland side. So all in all, pretty good driving, pretty easy driving. And we've averaged somewhere around the city to think 80 kilometers per hour. Because I like to try doing um, 360s on one wheel. 360? Yeah, trying to get the cows in and skidding and burning out. Gosh. Trying to get the cows in. Alright, we have made it. So this is Bramwell Station. And we've got our tent set up. Lots of flat areas. And there's also shelters. So we set ourselves up under this shelter. And... We're going to be joined by a couple other travelling families tonight. Lund's Lap and Ducking Around Oz are here as well. We're going to have a bit of a fire tonight. You can see there's plenty of space. It's pretty cool. They do meals here, live music. And right now, they're over there watching the mustering of some cattle. So it's a working station. After some very noisy cattle overnight, the poor cows were not very happy with being in the pens. The trucks are there for them this morning. A lot of them have already been loaded on. 
these pens were pretty full overnight. I guess these ones are the lucky ones waiting for the next truck. Lucky that they get a bit extra time out. Now, just a reminder, we aren't professionals. We haven't done this before. If you followed our earlier episodes, we bought this Land Cruiser for this trip and um, basically started doing some four-wheel driving. People know what they're doing. Matty from Lund's Lap's done a lot of four-wheel drive. So we're using his information on how to use the car properly. He's able to give me tips just like that. This is another telegraph pole that we've spotted, or Harry spotted to be more accurate. Harry's been spotting them all the way along the track. Some of them even have the wires still connected. This one's still upright. We're back on the PDR today. We're heading up to Ponson Bay to stay for a few nights. So that's by uh, the Jardine Ferry and Bramwell. Uh, no, Bramwell's where we came from. Jardine River Ferry only accepts credit cards, not cash, so you can't just need cash to, to do it. Here it is. So this is the Jardine River and this is the ferry that's going to get us across. So we're going to jump on this, go across the other side and keep going up to Bamaga, get some supplies before we end up at Punsan. So that's it, that's the Jardine River crossing. So it costs us 100 bucks to get across, it's about 130 with a van and it also gives you access to fish their rivers, it's Aboriginal land up here, um, also to stay at some of their free camps as well. So it's not just a $100 ferry crossing, um, you do get as part of that a permit and the money goes to local uh, Aboriginal um, members. So there you go, off to, I guess we're gonna go to the Croc Tent on the way through Bamago, get some supplies and then head up. left here to go up to Bamiga. Sealed. And it's sealed. Surprising amount of sealed roads actually. Even lines on the road. It's very simple. We've pulled up in Bamiga and I've just ducked into the bakery and we've grabbed some fresh ham and cheese rolls. Five dollars for a pack of four. It's not too bad about what you pay in the shops anyway. We pay about four fifty normally. Nice fresh ones, they feel uh, very nice and soft and the same for a loaf of bread, so it's not too bad really. These are the best cheese and bacon rolls I've ever had. They are so good. <laughs> Just pulled up here there's a dc3 crash site there's a lot of crash planes up here in cape york back from when we were in the wars this is the first part of the plane that you come across walking down the track sort of hard to tell what it was maybe the front of the plane have a look at this just crashed out here this is the next oh no seven hours so it took me seven hours to come from brisbane up to here where it crashed at about five o'clock in the morning so this is um basically a memorial re uh remembering those who lost their lives here it was an army raf plane and it was in 1945 so it was heading to new guinea Papua new guinea i guess for the war efforts and ended up here and now it sits just amongst the cape york tropical jungles i guess this is the way across this is Bunsen? Yeah, the road Just like the right way? Yeah, it says it is. Yeah. Bottom crossing road, it says. Here we go. It's only a big pool. It's like a puddle. It's actually a puddle. Daddy, Daddy. Daddy, Daddy. Oh, the islands, the islands. There's the islands and the water. Wow. After the long drive, we've made it to the coast. We're almost at the top of Australia, Harry. We're 
and just to the west, that's the ocean. So we're all set up at camp. This is our camp kitchen, got the awning out. Stove, water, all the kitchen implements. Out the back, we've got our tents. How good is that view? So we've camped on a beachfront site here at Huntsdown Bay. Pretty good view, Steph. Funnier. Got some steak sizzling here. This is our little camp kitchen set up. So we just cooked our veggies. Got some spuds that we've just cooked over on the fire. They're ready now and we'll serve it out. How's this? It's looking pretty good. We're right by the water. Got our tents just over here. Got our car and our awning. Pretty good. Puppy cooks dinner because it's outside. How nice is this in the morning, Harry? You need to go for a bush beach walk. The bush there, the beach, the water that's just teasing us. Oh, I'd love to go for a swim there. A little rock area down here. Pretty nice. Look at these fires, it's all burnt out, all the undergrowth, cleaning up the whole area. So there's a heap of fires we've seen along the way. They've all just been lit by the ranger, just clearing out the tip. It's quite smoky. You can see this haze everywhere. Haze? Oh, oh, right. <laughs> Absolute smoke. Wowee. <laughs> there you go, this is the new one. There he goes. Yeah. Spot. Just like that. Just driving up to Runga Point. So there's a free campground here, you can stay here. It's um, free to do so. We're running out of days. We're running out of days so we can't sort of uh, stay here. We can move here for a night but we're not sure it's worth moving here for one night but if you are coming up and you didn't want to pay to stay at Punsan Bay you could stay here and you could swim when the tide's out too so it gives you an opportunity to have a bit of a paddle in the, in the ocean. We've got a big day out today. We're pretty excited. We're going up to the tip but we're starting off our day with a visit to the croc tent we're coming out of Punzen Bay where we're staying and the croc tent is literally just to our right here. So we're gonna go in here and have a look. Elle's pretty keen to buy a t-shirt. What have you found, Elle? The map's cool on that one, isn't it? It's like our car on it kind of too. the road. This is it, up to the tip. There is no going back. Oh, that be... So, the plan today is we're going to head up to Pajinka, or the tip of Australia. Get the uh, little shot up there on the rocks uh, with the sign saying we're at the very tip of Australia, which is going to be kind of cool. It's just like a big fishing jetty, so I might throw a quick little line in over there. And then we're going to come back to Somerset and do what's known as the Five Beaches Four Wheel Drive Track. So it's a beautiful scenic beach drive. You come out of the beach and come across some jungle and then back onto the beach again. So that's the plan for today. Hopefully, back by mid afternoon, we'll have lunch on the road. Should be a good day out. Pretty picturesque spot up here at the top of Australia. Have a look at the palms, the beach. Anset and Qantas used to own a resort up here. It's currently abandoned. It was handed back to the local Aboriginal community, but nothing's done with it. It's sitting there, so what? Paranella Park. We might try to buy that and create our own oasis. Look at this. Wonder what it'd cost. Windy butt. Look at how stunning this is. This is just at the car park at the tip of Australia. It's absolutely picturesque. You've got your islands out there, turquoise water, the beach, the palm trees behind me, noisy kids over there, they're finding crabs. This is a car park up the tip of Cape York and you can go up over the hills to get to the tip or if it's low tide, you can walk around. But the tides aren't too high at the moment, so it's an hour away from high tide. You can see the high watermark there. We're going to give it a go walking around, even though high tide's approaching, and see if we can get around that way. Wow, isn't that pretty? This is about half 
halfway up, I reckon, to the tip. Wow, again. Golly gosh. Wow, wow, wow. Following this path up on the rocks. And this is it. This is the tip of Australia. You can see a few islands, so this is all part of the Torres Strait Islands. It's something like, well, there's mixed reports, it's somewhere between 243 and 118 different islands make up Torres Strait Islands. Only around 18 or so are actually inhabited. And so this is some of the uninhabited ones. This is the tip of Australia, Cape York, and it really is awesome. So this is it, this is what it's all about, the sign. We're gonna get our photos, then we're gonna head off. We good? A little bit windy. The boys are reliving their days back on the Tiwi Islands and they think that they might be able to find some long bottoms in here. Thought that that might be nice on the fire tonight. So in, into the mangroves they go. These are the little periwinkles. See one there, grab me and Jed. There we go, so we've got a few now. They've emerged victorious. Yep. We've Have we got culture. Harry? Is Harry come out? He's coming. Harry's still in there. What did we find, Jed? Um, we found some periwinkles. Periwinkles. What do we do with them? Eat them. Butter and garlic, I think. We're just checking in. This used to be a resort here, right at the tip of Cape York. This would have been a reception. Then this little hut scattered right throughout the rainforest. It's beautiful. Can't believe it's oh, not operating good. now. Let's go take a walk. Did you see the pool? Yeah, it's just there. Just amazing. Oh, it? stunning. Wow. Check in here. Don't read about this online, do you? Oh, stunning pool there. Oh, yeah, check in. Look at the roof. Look at the roof. <laughs> They're all steel footings. Look at it all. Like it's all the actual All the footings of the buildings. Hello, do you have a booking? Hello, have you? So you got your ovens in here? Let's have a look in the pool. Someone's had a good time here. They're really good, Okay, Christy, yeah. if you don't want to get eaten alive, I'd get out of here. There's lots and lots of them. Got some Aussies, you'll never look around. Bathrooms. I reckon this was like the restaurant area over here. And then there's huts, just up through the tracks up here. We're home. We're buying this, we're at least doing some deal. This is amazing. <laughs> We've been up to Pachinka, otherwise known as the tip. Now we're heading up to Somerset Beach. Spend the afternoon looking around up there. Up this way. The roads up here to Somerset are really good. In fact, even Cape York wasn't too bad. A few potholes, a few little bit uneven patches. But overall, really good roads. Um, it's pretty amazing to think that we just timed it perfectly and all the roads are perfect. I think in general they seem to be in pretty good nick. They get a lot of traffic through, they're constantly working on them. So in terms of bringing your van up, we could have bought our van up and we could have taken it. There's a campsite right on the tip of Australia. I'm spewing we couldn't camp there with the caravan. That would have been amazing. But this is a lot of fun. It's a great place to be. We're enjoying checking out what the very top of Australia and Cape York has to offer. A little bit rougher now, but still pretty good. I have a feeling we're about to see another stunning beach that we can't swim in. Yeah. Another one. Australia. Just teasing. Just teasing. Um, this is a look out here. So this is the entry to the beaches, I believe. We're on the five beaches four-wheel drive track. So it goes between the beaches and up through the dunes at different times. A little bit bouncy, a little bit soft. So we put our pressures right down to 22, I think I saw. 20. Oh, 20? Okay. Look at that though, how amazing. It's 
just a stunning part of the world. Beach number one. Beach one, here we go. Three, two, one, go. Oh my gosh. Right, then. <laughs> get, the boys just saw someone else having a race, so we're on. I didn't even go, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> She's talking to me. <laughs> I can't hear. Christy, you should do it on the radio. What if I got a delay? <laughs> What were you doing? What were you doing? What were you doing? Because you got a bit of start that time. Ah, oh, then went. Ah. And was an upper tail. Here we go up onto bitch number four. So we're working our way out now. The uh, racing ended up two wins to the 2019 Sahara, zero wins <laughs> to the 2011 Sahara, and with a box on top of and uh, one draw, so um, well played Toyota, the newest models are faster than yours. We've got a bit of a treat here this morning, we've bought a pancake mix as a special camping treat. The boys are jumping around and mixing it up. Alex is using his stopwatch to time 30 second blocks, and each 30 seconds they're swapping. How long do we need to mix it for Harry? How long do we need to shake it for all together? Two minutes. This is the waterfront down here at Seisha. It's really close to Babiga. Very pretty again. The water and the palms. night here so we've got happy hour we've got a few beers going wood fired pizzas it's a good way to finish our time up in Cape York next up we're heading to the tally track we're gonna do the northern part Let's go. 